Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the video blog uh, World Economics that we have with the Foundation Rafael Del Pino. Uh, we have two questions coming from the audience, two questions. One is about the phase one trade deal between the US and China. Another one is about this concept of a wealth tax to solve everything, obviously uh, uh, coming from interventionist uh, politicians. Let's start with the phase one trade deal and what we can expect. You see, the problem of an agreement between the United States and China is not necessarily to reach a phase one deal, perfect, that is not a problem, because it's, it would be basically going back to where we were uh, about 12 months ago. The problem is the phase two. And the reason why the problem is the phase two is because uh, the, the two economies, both the United States and China, uh, the slowdown of both economies has absolutely nothing to do with the trade war. It has a lot to do with debt saturation, with the excess of previous uh, stimuli and the lack of uh, uh, improvement in productivity. So those, those factors have very little to do with, with uh, the trade dispute. But more importantly, if we look at what uh, the phase two and what a trade deal actually means, um, it is extremely difficult to believe that the Chinese economy is going to accept uh, an improvement in a significant improvement, let's say this uh, to start with, in terms of the private intellectual property rights, in terms of capital controls, and in terms of uh, legal security. So, we need to be aware of the fact that in the period of the last 10 years, the Chinese economy has been actually closing quite significantly. On the other side, in the, uh, for, uh, from the side of the United States, it is very, very difficult to accept a trade deal in which there are no significant changes on those three elements, uh, intellectual property, capital controls, and legal security. Um, and it's also very, very difficult to reach an agreement that does not not uh, come in, in very small things. Uh, it is not going to change the trade deficit of the United States because there are structural elements to the trade deficit of the United States. To start with, the fact that the uh, United States likes to buy cheap goods and services, and obviously that uh, China in that element is definitely going to continue to export more than uh, what uh, the US exports to, to China, in any case, even with more stringent uh, uh, decisions in terms of those three elements that we talked about before. Therefore, we need to be extremely aware of two things, two things, okay? One, if, it, if there is a trade deal, it is very likely to be a zero-sum game. That means that uh, the China might uh, import a little bit more from the United States, which means importing a little bit less from other countries, because there's no evidence that China is importing less than what it needs. Actually, there is evidence of the opposite everywhere. Second is that it's extremely difficult to reach a far-reaching, uh, a truly groundbreaking trade deal between the US and China that completely reverts the trade deficit and that completely changes the uh, capital control, intellectual property and legal security issue. So once we've established uh, those risks, at least be aware of them. Uh, let's talk about the wealth tax. Billionaires. No, uh, R the rich have never been richer. Uh, we hear everywhere that the percentage of wealth accumulated by the rich has never been larger, which is not true. It is simply not true. To start with, the percentage of wealth accumulated by the uh, richest percentile uh, after taxes and transfers hasn't moved dramatically and hasn't moved dramatically after tax and transfers because doing it at a gross level, doing it uh, the way that some people are doing it is simply being disingenuous because it's trying to show to people that there is a massive level of accumulation of wealth and more importantly that that accumulation of wealth is unjustified. But let's start 
to talk about what they are telling us that they're going to do. A wealth tax. The billionaires will be taxed on their wealth. Hold on a second. A tax on wealth is taxing illiquid assets mm -hmm. and requiring cash transfers from those illiquid assets. Most of the wealth of billionaires is in what? Is in shares, okay? Shares in the stock market. They're not selling them, but more importantly, if they had to sell portions of that wealth in order to pay the tax, what would happen to those shares? Exactly, those shares would fall, would fall in the stock market because if the biggest owner of a stock is, is reducing its stake in the company, while, um, and you see that th there is an increasing pressure to uh, make that person sell more of a stock, the value of the company is going to fall in the market. Absolutely it will. It has always been that case. So the idea of calculating wealth without it being, uh, without there being any transaction that proves that that wealth is real is simply paper calculation. It's a paper calculation of uh, the transaction value of things that have not been sold, of things that have not been transferred. And so if you put a cash tax on paper valued wealth, it is extremely likely that you will see three things. First, capital flights. It's going to be impossible for people that are rich in assets but don't have a lot of uh, cash to pay that tax and therefore they will look for any option to uh, move that wealth elsewhere. The second thing that you're going to find is that the uh, tax revenues that they estimate that they're going to collect out of this, uh, out of this tax are much, much, much lower than what they expected. So one, you're not going to reduce the deficit. Two, you're not going to reach uh, the level of revenues that, you, that these people need for their massive entitlement programs. Third, very important factor. So we said, first, capital flights. Second, lower revenues than estimated. Third, an absolute destruction in the incentive to create more jobs, to invest more, and to attract uh, capital into the country. It is basically a, a warning sign saying, not in this country, don't invest in this country. There is a reason why most of the Eurozone countries, all of them except two, have decided to eliminate the wealth tax. And the reason why they've done it is precisely because the negative impact on investment, on job creation, and on improvement of the economy in general, and on tax revenues, the negative impact of all of those was much larger than the alleged benefits of a few uh, million euros or dollars uh, collected uh, from, from revenues. There is absolutely no way in which a wealth tax would pay for the trillions of dollars of uh, in expenditure in entitlements and in different programs that we're hearing. Absolutely no way. But more importantly, there is a reason why the United States or countries that uh, are talking about this uh, have today a strong financial position. It's precisely because there is an incentive to keep mm, the uh, latent wealth without being uh, transferred to cash, that people prefer to maintain their wealth in the country, in shares, in illiquid assets, in, so that, which are investing in the economy. The, the opposite only destroys the wealth creation and the improvement in jobs and in investment. And obviously, once you look at it, the first thing that anybody that has any chance of success is going to do is to try to avoid at all costs reaching that level of wealth. So it not only works as a deterrent on future investments, it also works as a deterrent on actual current wealth. It's a 
It's an atrocious idea that has never worked in the French Revolution, that has never worked in so many other cases in which it was implemented. And what happened in the French Revolution was pretty, was pretty evident. After confiscating wealth from the, the rich, what the country ended up having was one, no more wealth, two, uh, a massive uh, outflow uh, of capital, three, uh, no, no re real investment in the economy. As such, um, this concept of a wealth tax needs to be extremely well, be extremely well uh, analyzed before it's even implemented, because the effect can actually be and will very likely be exactly the opposite of what it intends to achieve. Thank you very much. Thank you.